Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Chartreuse Leprechaun. My name is Mark, your host, and it's time for another Days of COVID update video. And yeah, we'll throw in some technical updates and some other stuff because, well, why not, right? Uh, by the way, I want to thank you for joining us on our YouTube journey here at the Chartreuse Leprechaun. I'm having so much fun doing this. <laughs> I have so much stuff to learn, and oh God, is that ever the understatement of the year? Oh Lord. <laughs> We're getting better at our edits. We're getting better at our audio quality. Well, as much as possible with our low budget gear anyway. Uh, yeah, hopefully our content's improving as well. I like to think it is. And suggestions for improvements, game ideas, uh, all that fun stuff, they are certainly welcome. So be sure to put them in the comments. Um, and be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, set yourself up for notifications, all that stuff so you don't miss anything around here. And I guess we'll get started. So uh, first of all, well, you know what? I was going to do health updates first, but I think we'll start with the technical stuff this time, because why not? <laughs> so we have not gotten anywhere with a new computer build. Well, maybe a little bit. I do have the processor and the RAM installed on the motherboard, uh, but my son has not gotten anywhere building a test bench or anything of that nature. And the problem is his schedule. He works 10 hours a day in sheet metal fabrication, fabrication, sheet metal fabric, I think it's fabrication. Anyway, he's in a sheet metal, a union sheet metal shop in Texas in the summer. Yeah, because even in September, we're still hitting the 90s and 100s. And yeah, <clears throat> and he's a half an hour, an hour and a half away from the house. Uh, hour to an hour and a half, depends on traffic and which way he's going. Uh, and on top of that, two nights a week, he's in school for two to three hours in the Union Apprenticeship Program. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he does all that in four days. Yeah, four days. So his days off are spent recovering from being completely fried. Uh, and he can usually be found decompressing, doing woodworking by hand. Yes, he has some power tools. But he also has a steadily growing collection of non-powered hand tools for woodworking. That's his method of decompression. Now, personally, <laughs> I think he needs this computer so he can decompress by blowing things up, wrecking cars, killing zombies, all of that. Uh, but because his brain and body are pretty fried after four days of overload, a few quiet hours of woodworking seems to be his method of decompression, and I can't really blame him for opting for something quiet. So I shouldn't complain, even though I do it anyway. Just don't tell him that. On the other hand, my computer is functioning just fine. Uh, the technical issues seem to be behind us. It looks like it really was a repasting of the CPU, um, much to my surprise. Now, we still need a, a uh, to upgrade the GPU, the graphics card, which will happen when I win the lottery, which I don't play, or when someone else wins the lottery and decides to share the bounty. <laughs> or we will suddenly get monetized on YouTube, or suddenly get massive orders of merch, or uh, suddenly get massive numbers of Patreon supporters, or someone just decides to send us one, all of which I am not holding my breath for. I would turn none of them down, ever, but I'm not holding my breath. Uh, speaking of graphics card, does anyone know what thickness thermal pad you use with an MSI GTX 1660? I'm thinking it might not be a bad idea to apply some or maybe reapply. I haven't taken it apart to see if they're in use. Um, but I can't find any information anywhere. And I would really like to know before I do a GPU teardown on the only working GPU we have. So if you happen to know, leave us a comment about it, please and thank you. I appreciate it. Um, meanwhile, we are almost back on schedule with our production. Yay. I try to stay at least a week ahead. And right now, 
eh, we're maybe half of that. But we'll get there. Uh, the computer temps are staying where they're supposed to. Thank God. The rendering speed is still where it's supposed to be. The video quality is still great. So I'm pretty happy with where we are at the moment, technically. And <clears throat> that unfortunately leads me to the areas that I'm not so happy about, which is uh, health updates. We'll start with the dystonia. Uh, my neurologist can't see me until November. So her determination of disability for dystonia cannot be made until then. And unfortunately, Social Security has denied my second appeal for disability. So if I understand the process correctly, the next step is to request a hearing. I don't really know how things work after that. Um, the disability insurance company has me hooked up with some group that handles all of that. Uh, I'm sure they'll be informing me about all of that and what we need to do and so forth shortly. But I uh, haven't heard anything from them as of the time of this recording. The dystonia symptoms are still present. There is actually some cramping going on in the left hand now when I use it. Uh, that's bad. Uh, the disturbing part is I'm getting periodic episodes of uncontrolled movement in other limbs and extremities. Uh, mostly um, mostly the, the right hand and forearm and the right thigh. Strangely enough, it's not the left. I don't know. I mean, we, it is in the left hand, and don't get me wrong. Um, those kind of started in the hospital while they were administering remdesivir. Um, but I was already having issues with the right hand and fingers prior to COVID. And all that makes me question the diagnosis of task-specific dystonia. Um, I don't know. We did have a new brain MRI done uh, last week. Uh, the previous one was in 2017. Um, maybe earlier. I haven't seen the report on the new one, so I'll keep you posted. Um, have a copy of the disc, but I don't know how to read it. Uh, now, about my recovery. So I mentioned at the start of the Hardware Issues video that aired on September 10, pretty much every video since then, I've made mention that I'm still having breathing problems. Matter of fact, if you watched the, the last episode of Random Game Saturday, where I played Deathly, Deathly Stillness, I keep wanting to mispronounce that, um, then you heard me struggling to get air. Well, that was because the air hose got kinked as I dragged it up the stairs so I could do recording. Uh, that's what happens when I don't get supplemental oxygen, and I'm three weeks post-hospitalization. The supplemental oxygen is still at three liters. That's not anywhere close to as low as I want it. The problem is the longer I'm on this stuff, the more dependent I will get. To, uh, the more dependent on it I will get. Is that the? Yeah, I think that's the way I want to say it. Or at least that's what the folks at the hospital and some respiratory therapy folks that we know all tell me. And I do not want that at all. But every time I try to go to two and a half liters, the blood oxygen numbers goes weird, go weird, usually 90 to 93 percent. And the medical folks want you to be above 94. So, yeah, not good. Meanwhile, if I go without oxygen to, say, take a shower, my blood oxygen level tanks to about the low 80s. Now, that is an improvement over the upper 70s that I had the week before, but it's still bad. Hypoxia and hypoxemia, they become concerns when it gets into the upper 80s and below. So, yeah, oxygen flow is very much a problem, and we don't have a solution for it yet. And that's always the key word, yet. Um, on the bright side, stairs are no longer strained for my legs. I was able to get a little light yard work uh, the other day. <laughs> yeah, light yard work. I poop scooped. Yeah, five dogs of poop scooping. I had the oxygen on the whole time and blood oxygen dipped to the low 90s. Kind of acceptable. Uh, all that tells us is PT is having a positive effect. Um, strength is returning. Endurance is building. So we still have a few wins going on and I will absolutely take those wins. And as usual, I want to touch on a spiritual note. I want to say that COVID and all the struggles my family has gone through because of it has changed nothing about my faith. 
I still believe God is good all the time, especially when it doesn't look like it. You see, it doesn't matter the struggles Christians face. God will accomplish his, his God will accomplish his purposes in and through the lives of those who are surrendered to him. The plans of Satan will not accomplish his goals, even though it might look like they're being accomplished. Um, Jesus crucified is the best example of the plans of Satan being fulfilled. It absolutely looked like it. But instead, on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead, as promised in the scriptures, which is the Old Testament, breaking the power of death to keep every soul separated from God. Then on the day of Pentecost, God poured out his Holy Spirit on the saints to empower them for the work of ministry, also promised in the scriptures. But Christians still face trials and struggles. Fox's Book of Martyrs went through historia, the the author of Fox's Book of Martyrs went through historical documents to write the stories of many who refused to recant of their faith and died for it. Um, there have been ministers in all kinds of places for the sick who got sick with that particular disease and stayed to continue the work of ministry. And many of them ended up dying in service to God because of their faith. There are known instances of ministers. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer is one who was put in a Nazi concentration camp for his faith. He did amazing ministry there and died there, refusing to give up his faith. We know Christians are being persecuted, imprisoned, and even killed right now in Afghanistan, China, Iran, and other countries. So does repenting of your sin and surrendering to Jesus make all things wonderful and perfect? <laughs> no, no, uh, but you will have God's more than superabundance of every good thing he has for you. What he has for you is different than what he has for me. Could it include riches and a life of ease? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. It will include building you up for the accomplishing of his purposes, and that includes correction and instruction. It also includes uh, one, a, a part of Jeremiah's ministry was rooting up and tearing down things men built instead of things God wanted built. And he'll do that in your life, that rooting up and tearing down. Oh, yeah. Uh, it also includes trials and persecutions. It may even include death in his service. Does surrendering to Jesus make you a new person? Oh, yes. Will you still battle with sin? Oh, yes. You will always be tempted but you don't have to give in. Can you finally win against sin? Yes, because Jesus overcame sin for you, and in him you have that victory. You do not have to surrender anymore to that destruction, because it doesn't have to control you, your thoughts, or your desires. So I challenge you to surrender to Jesus. Be born again by faith to that living hope through the blood of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And I think that is enough for now. I want to thank you for spending your time with us here today on the Chartreuse Leprechaun. We really do appreciate it during these days of COVID. Uh, please leave us a comment about today's video, what you liked, what you didn't like. And of course, all the stuff we asked about, game ideas, channel improvement ideas, equipment uh, 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 repair stuff. Uh, honestly, we'll take whatever feedback you want to give us because we need your input to get better. Uh, we want to be able to give you what you want to see best we can anyway. So please hit that like button, subscribe, set yourself up for notifications, all that fun stuff. Uh, check out our merch page linked in the description below. Uh, check out our Patreon page also linked in the description below. But above all, always, always, always remember, if you see it and you can't quite explain it, you can be sure the leprechaun did it. Now you have yourselves a great day, a great week, and we will see you here next time on the Chartreuse Leprechaun. Bye-bye.